Good morning and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To all my listeners, I pray that this morning's meditation will touch your life and change you and uh, set you on a higher level in your faith and in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that the anointing will be upon all of us. Today's meditation is taken from a passage in the letter of Paul to Colossians, chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians, chapter 3, verse 17, which says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. I also would like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Chapter 10, 1 Corinthians, verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. I want you to notice one thing. For the Apostle Paul, the glory of God in his life as a, an aim, as a goal, was so important that in First Corinthians passage we say, even your eating and drinking should be done for his glory and his glory alone. A genuine Christian life is a Christ-centered life. It is a life that seeks God's glory in whatever you do or say. Our deed and our words all are to be used to bring glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. For Paul, God's glory was so important that um, even his drinking and eating had to be for God's glory. And today in this modern time, the mention of God's name is not considered important. In the light of this passage before us, we need to be very careful in our actions and our words. How careful are we? How do we recognize that something we do or say is pleasing to God, our Lord, and glorify God? Now, in this regard, I would like to ask you to consider seven questions that all of us must ask before we do or speak anything. That will help us tremendously to judge within ourselves whether what we are about to do or what we are about to say will anyway glorify our God in whose honor we must speak and do anything we want to do. So let us ask this question. Let us consider these questions. They will help you a great deal. The first question we must ask before we do or speak anything is this. What I am about to do or I am about to speak, can it be done for God's glory or honor? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2, 23, we read, everything is permissible, 
but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. And then again, chapter 11, verse 1 says, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Now that is very important. All of us must follow Christ as our example. Now, Apostle Paul could boldly and confidently ask these believers to follow him because by following Paul, you will be following Jesus Christ. Because Paul says, even as I follow Christ, therefore you follow me. And that is the confidence we must have. Question number two. Can it be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Remember, you are to represent Christ in this world. And, uh, and all stands for Jesus Christ. Is it something you can ask God's approval? And his blessing. Whatever you are about to say. Whatever you are about to do. Ask this question. Is it uh, such a matter. That I am about to do or say. Conf confidently can I. Ask God's blessing and God's approval over this. Ask that question and think. And the question number three is this. Can it be done while truly giving thanks to God? Can I say, thank you, Lord, for what I am about to do or for what I am about to say? In order to thank God, we should have the confidence beyond any shadow of doubt that uh, what I'm about to say or what I'm about to do definitely is pleasing to God according to the scriptures. So you must always judge with the scripture. What does the scripture say? And if it is in conformity with the scripture, go ahead. And then question number four, is it a Christ-like action would Jesus do it? You know, in 1 John, chapter 2, verse 6 says, 1 John, chapter 2, verse 6 says, Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. You know, it is easy to say in words, I am living in Jesus Christ. That, where do you live? I am living in Jesus Christ. Because that is what makes me uh, uh, acceptable to God, the Father. That is what Jesus taught in, in the gospel according to St. John chapter 15. When he said, I am, the, I am the vine and you are the branches. And any branch that does not live in me, abide in me, cannot bring forth fruit. So abide in me. So that should be our relationship. If we truly say and claim to the world, I am a person who walks with the Lord. And if that is so, then your walk in this, in this time, in this world, should be as Jesus walked. In his pathway of humility and confidence in God and trust in God, knowing God's will and then doing God's will. 
And then the fifth question is, could it cause another Christian compromise his or her cons conscience or their convictions? What I am about to do, what I am about to say, will it encourage other Christians to live like her Christian friend? Or what you are about to say or do will become a stumbling block for your friend. That is what you must ask. And according to the scripture, scriptures, if that is going to be a stumbling block, then don't do it. And at some point, if you are not careful, what you do or what you say may weaken his or her devotion to Christ. You know, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 says, Now about food sacrificed to idols, we know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Remember, our relationship with others must be as one of love. That also is again Jesus taught in his discourse in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 15. Our relationship and uh, there should be no stumbling block and that love must only be growing between you rather than diminishing. And that diminishing will happen if what you are about to do or say become a stumbling block. So my friends, you don't want to be a stumbling block to others from following Jesus sincerely and according to the scriptures. And I pray that you will understand the importance. And then the sixth question is this. Will it weaken or strengthen my desire for spiritual things? Like what should I do in order to grow and progress in my a spiritual life. Two things are very essential. The word of God and the prayer. Your life. You should be a man of the Bible. Of the word. And you must be a man of a prayer. And I pray that you will not neglect these things. So that you can be a tremendous blessing to those who are around you that they too may become spiritual as you are. We all need to have the same kind of confidence that Apostle Paul had to, uh, to call somebody and say, you follow me because I follow Christ. That is the confidence. Are we able to do that? Are you very confident about your own following Christ in his, foot, in his path? following the word. And remember the word of God is the, st the, the standard for our faith and our practical life as well. And so, because of us, another believer should not become weak. They must become strong and with a strong desire. Seventhly, the seventh question is this. Could it weaken or hinder my influence for Christ or others who do not know him or who may look to me as an example of a Christ-like behavior? And let me, in closing, read to press this point, Matthew chapter 5. Verses 13 
to 16. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a ball. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Now, in the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And my friends, these sayings of Jesus Christ, these teachings of Jesus Christ are important to us that we may apply it in our practical daily life because an unsaved person may never read the Bible. The only Bible they will see and read is my life and your life. And that is why Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And a light when it is lit cannot be hidden somewhere under the bushel or anywhere. But it is set up on a stand, a light lamp stand. So that everyone in the house can see the light. And he is comparing it to your good deeds. Then he said, therefore, let this world see your good deeds. And then let them glorify or let them praise our God in heaven. That's the way you and I can be a witness, a living witness that others may see and be encouraged to follow what I follow, to follow what you follow. And finally, they then will be transformed and changed by the word of God which worked in your own heart that, so that you are changed and in whom they see the light. And in that light, they see God the Father. And may the Lord bless you and help you that you may be so full of the Holy Spirit and by the help and presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, you may be what Jesus Christ desires you to be. For this I pray and surrender yourselves to the Lordship of Jesus and ask him that you may be so full of his spirit and that your life will, like a light, will shine forth for others to see our God in heaven. Amen. I pray that your life will be an example for others today. So it is a good day. Walk with Jesus and live in him and glorify God. Amen.